In the last video under contingent valuation, we talked about problem. We did the description of talked about problems one, two, and two, two a. The sole topic of this video is problem number three. Let me erase something so you can see a little bit easier. Uh, so problem number three is that willingness and ability to pay is usually much less than willingness to accept. Much of what we're going to talk about just comes from the fact that willingness and ability to pay is not equal to willingness to accept. Now, remember what these two terms mean. If you have uh, an environmental problem, like a um, polluting factory that's proposed to be constructed near where you live, you're, in, in this case, you would you would be hurt by this factory. Um, your willingness and ability to pay is your the amount of money that you'd be uh, willing and able to pay in order to avoid living next to the factory. You'd be willing to give up that money if the government decided in return not to locate the factory there. The willingness to accept is the amount of money that you could pay in compensation if the government does decide to build a polluting factory there to make you as well off as if it hadn't built it there. Now, it's possible that willingness to accept is infinite, but it's not possible that willingness and ability to pay is infinite because willingness and ability to pay includes ability to pay, and ability to pay is never infinite. So the example I just gave was a government policy that was going to damage you is going to increase pollution. Now suppose that the government is thinking about a policy that would help you out, let's say when that would decrease pollution. Then your willingness and ability to pay is the amount of money that you'd be willing to pay in order to get the government to adopt the policy. And your willingness to accept is your willingness to accept compensation in return for the government not adopting it. So what you're willing you're only willing to pay for something that helps you. So that'll either be a policy that helps you or the government deciding not to adopt the policy that hurts you. And similarly, willingness to accept is accepting compensation if you get hurt. There are two ways of getting hurt. One is if the government adopts a policy that hurts you and the, gov the other is that the government decides not to adopt a policy that would help you. Now, for the rest of, of this, I'm going to turn to a handout, which you also have a link to in, uh, from, the, from the class webpage. This is something that I am, am teaching a different way this year, mostly because of the, the research that I've been doing lately about well, willingness and ability to pay and, and willingness to accept. And the the consequences of the fact that they aren't the same. Now, I said the economists have known since around nineteen forty that that in general these aren't the same. As I said before, one reason is because WATP is constrained by income and WTA isn't. So what I'm going to do here is suppose that the policy question is whether to adopt policy, climate policies, which result in the extinction of polar bears. You're going to have people who support the policy, uh, let's say uh, oil companies, um, fossil fuel um, ex ex extractive industries that would benefit from continuing to be able to um, to mine fossil fuels, to 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 uh, to drill for fossil fuels and and sell them, and they'll also and and fossil fuels cause the climate change, which increases the temperature in the Arctic, which uh, could cause polar bears to become extinct. These policies also have opponents who stand to lose in various ways if polar bears go extinct. As I write, some of the opponents might not yet be alive. We're going to deal with two cases. In the first, 
the supporters of the policy have a benefit of polar bear ext extinction of exactly a hundred dollars and the second the supporters will will have two values for polar bear extinction one is going to be a WT, WTP and the other is going to be a WTA but for right now we're going to do the the first one which is this is a unique benefit of extinction that the people who support extinction would stand to gain exactly a hundred dollars now consider three possible values for the cost of polar bear extinction right so again let's just be clear what's going on there's a benefit to polar bear extinction and there's a cost the benefit accrues to people like fossil fuel companies the cost accrues to people who like polar bears maybe they are Alaska natives who depend on polar bears for the proper functioning of the ecosystem um, maybe there are lots of other people that just like the fact that there are polar bears around so the the people who the fossil fuel companies their benefit of polar bear extinction is a hundred dollars now the cost of polar bear extinction is not, is going to be measured in two ways with WATP and WTA WATP is willingness and ability to pay to save the polar bears and WTA is willingness to accept compensation if the polar bears go extinct and these two numbers will be different even for the same person in case one let's say that the the WATP is 200 and the WTA is 300 now, usually uh, usually not always but usually WATP is less than WTA okay because WTA uh, WATP is constrained by income by ability to pay and WTA isn't and in all the examples that I give in this table like this one WATP was less here WATP is going to be less here WATP is going to be less so so everything that I wrote in this table goes along with that pattern now in case number one I claim polar bear should not be allowed to go extinct and the reason is because the benefit of polar bear extinction is a hundred well, we don't know exactly what the cost is, but the cost is either 200 or 300. It doesn't matter, though, whether it's 200 or 300. Both of those numbers are bigger than 100. So the cost is bigger than the benefit. The, the cost of extinction is bigger than the benefit of extinction, and therefore polar bears should not be allowed to go extinct. Okay, so the next example, in case 2, so in case two, we have these numbers, 25 and 55 for WATP and WTA. The benefit of polar bear extinction is still 100. So again, in this case, it doesn't matter whether you're using w, WATP or WTA. The benefit of polar bear extinction is bigger than either one of these two ways of measuring costs. And therefore, the polar bear should be allowed to go extinct. So those are situations where cost-benefit analysis gives you an unambiguous answer to the question of whether polar bear should go extinct or not. How about case three? So in case three, uh, what we're doing is comparing the benefit of polar bear extinction to the cost of polar bear extinction but here if you compare the $100 to 90 then 100 is bigger so the so you'd say that polar bear should go extinct but if you compare it to 105 105 is bigger so we'd say that the polar bears uh, ought to be saved so what I wrote here is case 3 is ambiguous 
So the net social benefit, which could be here, is the benefit minus the cost. We've been supposing that the benefit is 100. Using these costs for case 3, here's what I claim. So this is scenario 3, the net social benefit. And I ex explain this here. Uh, so the first row, WATP to save the bears, the cost of extinction is 90. Right? WATP to save the bears, the cost of extinction is 90. And the benefit is 100. Okay, the benefit's 100 right there. So if the cost of extinction is 90 and the benefit is 100, then the benefit is bigger than the cost, so the bear should go extinct. So 90 minus 100 is, uh, 100 minus 90 is 10. So this number is positive because the bear should go extinct. And if you save them instead, then the benefit you get from uh, saving them is that you don't incur the $90 cost of extinction. And the cost you get from saving them is you don't get this benefit of $100. So you get a negative number there. OK, now how about for the second row? Now, the second row has a, a 105 uh, Willingness to accept if bears are killed. Sorry about that. That's here, 105. And the benefit of extinction is 100. So here the cost of extinction is higher than the benefit, so you shouldn't kill the bears. And so saving the bears have, has a positive net social benefit. It's, it's 105 minus 100. And Killing the bears would be the opposite. So in these two columns, save the bears and kill the bears, you get from one column to the other by multiplying by negative one. Now, it, um, well, I mean, you have some positive numbers under kill bears and some negative and some positive under save bears and some negative, so what do you do? Well, as I said, as I said up above here, it, this looks to be ambiguous. You can, however, make some progress. So this is a somewhat minor point. One could argue that WATP, remember, we're talking about the people who support polar bears, is irrelevant for the kill bear column because it's the willingness and ability to pay to save the bears. So in the WATP row, the figure in the save the bears column has an asterisk denoting its more important status. In other words, WATP uh, here and here, um, to save the bears seems Let's put it over here. To save the bears seems to make sense because your willingness to save the bears if the bears actually get saved. It seems like it, your willingness and ability to pay to save the bears isn't so relevant if the society decides to kill the bears. And similarly, your willingness to accept that the bears are killed seems like it's really only relevant if society decides to kill the bears. So the two numbers I circle, which are also the ones that have asterisks, are the ones that seem to be the most salient out of these four. The ones that are more, the most important. If one agrees with this position, that is, that, that those ones I circled here are the imp more salient ones, more important ones, well, then what happens? Both of these are negative. So, um, OK, 
Okay, so I made a mistake actually in uh, in this version, and I'll, I'll, I'll fix this before the next video. So this is wrong here. So let me be more slow. So if one agrees with the position argued in the previous two paragraphs, which is saying that the the numbers with an asterisk are the most important. Then, since all the numbers in the table which have asterisks are negative, um, this has an asterisk, it's negative 5, and this has an asterisk, it's negative 10. I drew the wrong conclusion. Society should save the, so save the private bears. That's not the right conclusion. The correct conclusion is actually harder to discuss. What the table shows as as I label it, is net social benefit of either saving the bears or killing the bears. So the net social benefit of saving the bears, well, the salient number is negative 10. That means there's a negative net social benefit of saving the bears, which means saving the bears is a bad thing to do because it gives a negative net social benefit. The other possibility is killing the bears, which is the, the last column. But if the salient number is the one that I, I, I circled with uh, negative 5, that means that you shouldn't kill the bears because killing the bears gives a negative net social benefit. Now, this is a huge problem. There are only two things society can do. can either save the bears or kill the bears. But if you just look at the, the entries that are circled, in, in blue, then the net social benefit of either decision is negative, which means society should do neither one of them. But society has to do one of them. So you can see that uh, depending on what numbers you pick, um, yeah, it says here, case three is ambiguous. It, it really shows that so sometimes, sometimes cost-benefit analysis doesn't help society make a decision. And um, even, even if we do just pay attention to the asterisks, so we're eliminating half of the numbers in, in this table, we're only looking at two numbers instead of four, but since both of them are negative, it still doesn't help society decide. It's really critical then to acknowledge that the difference between WATP and WTA can sometimes cause real problems in trying to use cost-benefit analysis to help society make decisions. Now, not always. In in case one, everything was fine, and in case two, everything was fine, and since the society could definitely decide. But in case three, society uh, can't, and that's um, that's problematic. All right, I'm going to, uh, I'll end the video here, and in the next video, we'll go to section two.